Without any support, they survive. They're, they're fighters, they're ferocious, they're, they're survivors. Maybe ASCALS means no matter what challenges are thrown in front of you, you have to keep moving forward and, and not let them affect you. When you've got something unique, rather than to transform it back to something else, it's better to use that uniqueness, and that's what we try to do. This is a country that fans in most parts of the world have probably never thought of when it comes to football. The Philippines has simply never been a big deal in the sport. They've never played at a World Cup or even an Asian Cup. But that is about to change, and it's time for the world to get to know the Ascals. The Philippine Ascals, the street dogs, are taking part in the Asian Cup for the first time in January. So, are they ready for their biggest test? Two stars of Filipino football are the young husband brothers of Davao Aguilas. Winger James and forward and national team captain Phil were born in England and raised at London club Chelsea. But they joined up with the Ascals thanks to the research skills of a keen gamer. He found out we had a Filipino heritage via, via the game uh, football manager. He contacted the F Philippine Football Federation. Next thing we know, we're um, we're uh, in the change room and they say, hey, come, come into the office. Um, the Philippines have called and said they would like you to represent the Philippines. The team was one of the lowest ranked in the world in 2006 when they made their international debuts. After moving to the Philippines, they discovered it was a far cry from the Premier League. I think when I went on the field, I found a brick. I found a brick. At that time, you trained in your own staff. Um, you get changed in the bleachers, the stands. And sometimes we were traveling on the jeepney just to get to training. The captain actually won camp 2008. He, he got in the jeepney and he's a captain. And he, as he was stepping in, his foot went through a drain, a drain, a drain hole. Still on thank you for today. You always have to work hard. You have to be toughened up. wasn't any professional league in the Philippines, so players had all the time in the world to practice. So that is how it was in 2010 when they took over. Dan Palami has long been a key figure in the national team management. He's even pumped his own money into the team to help bring things up to scratch. When he first got involved, he had a huge task on his hands. There was really no sustainable program and uh, we never even had friendlies during international dates. It took a while for us to incorporate that into our schedules. There have been times in the past when people ask, oh, what team are you? Philippines, Philippines have a football team? Sure, plenty of people know about the Philippines' picture-perfect islands and paradise beaches, but less is known about their sports teams, sometimes even among the locals. To check on the state of Filipino football live and in the flesh, I'm going to a game in the newly created Copa Paulino Alcantara. So to get an idea of what it's like at a Philippine football match, I'm traveling now to Binyan Laguna to watch Laguna Stallions play against Davao Aguilas in the cup. Now the way we're getting there is with a jeepney, which is basically with a really old jeep uh, left here by the American military, tricked out and extended to a, a kind of bus. I actually had to take two jeepneys and a tricycle, but it's all worth it for the love of the game. And the chance to check in on national team stars, the Young Husband Brothers. As I make my way up to the stands, it seems like I shouldn't expect a packed house. But perhaps that's no surprise for a 3 p.m. weekday kickoff. And the clubs are doing their best to attract new supporters. Basically, my job is to ensure we have fans watching the game and also promote the, the, the football game as well. What we normally do is just go to schools and basically teach them about the, 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 the football education, so what's football all about and basically how they will enjoy it. A 
need to ditch the football culture in the country because normally they would just sit down and just watch it. Sukul means fight in Visayas. So basically we clap it. Sukul Aguilas. Sukul Aguilas. The match ends with a 4-0 win for Aguilas, who are based in the southern region of Mindanao. Host Stallion only moved to Laguna, close to Manila, in 2016, but they're already building up a local following. Yeah, I've been, been a fan of football since uh, my uh, high school days between Stallion and Laguna. Uh, decided to transfer here from, from, from Iloilo, to transfer here in, in Laguna. We gather the guys that are following football, uh, that are based here in, in the nearby areas, and we form the Lakeside Squad. Not everything's running smoothly here. There's no electricity or running water at the stadium on this match day. But the enthusiasm from the clubs and fans overcomes everything. And teams are doing their bit for good causes too. We are a football charity registered here as well as in the UK. And uh, our belief is we can use football as a platform to transform children and later on transform their communities. Today, these are uh, special beneficiaries. They, are, they were formerly street children. Some of them are actually from ethnic an ethnic tribe in the south. You know how they're much affected by war. <laughs> Battles between Islamist groups and the army in Aguilas's home region of Mindanao have left many children vulnerable. Football for Humanity is trying to help them, with assistance from the clubs. <laughs> Davo Aguilas very uh, generously offered a free football uh, game to the kids, and these are their idols, you know, these are Filipino football superstars. So it's a dream come true for them, and we're happy to be part of it. We're very thankful for them coming to support us there. It's, it's great meeting them all, and uh, yeah, you just see the smiles on their faces, even when you just take a picture, and it really means a lot. The kids, you know, they, they cheered us on, and they, they cheered us to victory. <laughs> in spite of the slightly sparse crowd that we had today, the people who were here were really passionate. The ultras with the drums, the kids from the foundation. This is exactly what you want to see at a country that's trying to build up its football culture. But what does the state of the domestic game mean for the national team, the Azcals, ahead of the Asian Cup? We've been steadily improving as a team. Now we've re reached our highest ranking ever, 111, and we feel that we could improve it in the next uh, few games. Yeah, it always struck me that the Philippines had got players. Uh, it always struck me that they'd got potential and so um, when the option came to come here and do something different outside of Thailand, it was easy. Scott Cooper will lead the team into the Asian Cup alongside new head coach Sven Goran Eriksson. The vastly experienced Swede recently signed up with the Azcals in a high profile appointment. He could be the spark that helps Philippine football reach its potential. As for Cooper, he's a bridge between two footballing worlds, combining a European upbringing with experience in Southeast Asia, much like many of the players, most of whom were born abroad to Filipino parents and came through academies in more established football leagues. It really, it works a little bit like a, a football club would. So we try to incorporate everybody's uh, sort of culture or heritage into one group, much like any football club would do in Premier League or Bundesliga or anywhere else. But we're special and we're unique in that sense. And when you've got something unique, rather than tr transform it back to something else, better to use that uniqueness. And that's what we try to do. But gradually the focus is switching to local players. Part of my time in Thailand I'm most proud of is, is developing young players that went on to the national team. And so we're already identifying some young players here that can do that. And so there's some exciting young players come through. As a strategy, it has worked very well. But uh, of course, I long to see the day when 
uh, our local uh, program will be at par with those that uh, our foreign-based players are exposed in, so that uh, we have a, a bigger base to choose from. But there's one big problem for youth football here, basketball, the most popular sport in the Philippines and especially Manila. That's partly because it's easier to play in the cramped spaces on offer here. Because soccer are no the court. You don't have a court here, is that why? If you had a, a football pitch, would you play? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't stop kids in Brazilian favelas, but it's true the lack of space is a problem. Still, football is making progress. Biggest sport in the Philippines is basketball. We would be maybe three, four. But uh, I've seen a lot of uh, changes and a lot of improvement. There was under a thousand people who, who in the football community, but now there's millions who are aware and interested in the sport. Way back in 2010, uh, I. We, there was only one pitch that we could use uh, in, in Manila for the national team. Now we have one, two, three, maybe six pitches that has been set up for football. It's getting uh, popular nowadays. There are so many kids uh, now interested in playing football aside from basketball. <laughs> It may not be the number one sport, but uh, from where it came from, oh, you, you, you could, you'd say maybe a thousand percent uh, improvement. Do you guys like soccer as well? Football? Yes! Yeah. Yeah? I've never played it. So football is growing here. The national team is the best it's ever been, and the coach is a legend. But I want to know what needs to happen to push Philippine football to the next level. What will it take to pack out arenas like Rizal Memorial Stadium here in Manila? You know, I'd like to see the Filipino League grow. Uh, we'd like to see more teams in it. We'd like to see more leagues. We'd like to see better TV coverage. But in order to do that, there needs to be success somewhere so that it, it encourages that and the sponsorship comes in. So it probably rests on our shoulders. So just how much of a difference could a good performance at the Asian Cup make? Who better to ask than the ultras who have followed the team through thick and thin? Just basically having everybody in the whole Asia see that there is Philippine football existing. There's an existing Philippine football team and that we can go toe to toe with, with anyone in Asia. Popularity of football in the Philippines depends on the national team. I really hope that our national team will do well because once they have very successful campaigns, football will really experience another revival here in our country. Hopefully we'll do good in the Asian Cup. I think more and more people will uh, continue to uh, support. Hashtag. It'll be a tough ask in Group C though. Along with growing footballing power China, the Philippines face fellow debutants Kyrgyzstan and one of the tournament favourites South Korea. And with the Asian Cup, you know, we've, we've achieved being there for the first time. Now we have to ask ourselves, now we have to challenge ourselves, can we be there every, every, every competition? The future looks bright for the Philippines and we hope uh, it starts in the Asian Cup. Ericsson can help, but this team lives and dies on the ASCAL spirit. ASCALs actually mean street dogs, but to everyone involved with football here, it means so much more. What does the phrase, the ASCALs, mean to you? The ASCALs means no matter what challenges are thrown in front of you, you have to keep moving forward and, and not let them affect you. Street dogs are more territorial. You go to, to their territory and they'll bark at you. They'll scare you to death. So we, we, it's more of like, that's how we want it to be. You know? We're called ASCALs. You come here and don't expect that you'll get a fair treatment from us. It's got to be something synonymous that when you get into the ASCALs camp, there's certain things that is expected of you, the way we play, the way we train, 
the way we go about things, the way we support each other. To me, the ASCALS means Filipino pride, uh, the family feeling and never say die attitude. Without any support, they survive. They're, they're fighters, they're ferocious, they're and they're survivors. We may not be getting the biggest uh, sponsors, we may not be getting the full support that is needed for a national team, but we'll be there fighting, we'll be there surviving, and even, as we have shown, thriving. This is, uh, this is something that, uh, and this has been my life for, for the last uh, eight years. The Philippines still has a way to go to be considered a genuine football nation, but they've already made so much progress. Everybody from the fans to the players to the manager talks about gradual improvement. And with the intense passion of the people I've met here, I've no doubt that they can keep making that happen. Now they have to make sure that the hard work pays off at the Asian Cup and prove that every street dog has its day.